Welcome, this is the last episode of tutorial series how to make film in Blender. I will tell you something about render engines, why we are going to use EV, show you how to have best setting for EV and how to render it. It will be pretty simple and pretty quick actually, so let's get to it. Alright, our scene is done. Basically everything is prepared to get it out of Blender to some TV projection or whatever. Probably more film projection, projection than TV projection. Anyway, I will leave it up to you. So, rendering. The most funny part, because we are going to use EV. So let's start with talking about render engines. Uh, in Blender you have basically EV and Cycle. Workbench, ignore, you don't need it. Well, we will use EV because it's real-time render and it will render almost what you see right here and it will render it very fast in terms of seconds. With cycles, it will be in terms of hours, which you definitely don't want. I will quickly show you the difference because EV can be used for almost anything, but its, it's specialty is not as uh, realistic renders. If you want to do a realistic render, it will be more like illustration than animation, because as I said, one frame takes a lot of time. You can use cycles. There you can see it. It looks way more real, but absolutely unusable for us, because it's still rendering, as you can see. And that's only viewport. If I click to render, I would be here for another at least 15 minutes. This is a very easy scene, but so it wouldn't take that much, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> we will use Eevee. And, but this is still more of a preview because with EV we will add some of this. Basically enable absolutely everything. I will I will then explain how everything works. So we will start from bottom actually because color management is most important thing right here. A uh, uh, view transform is what you wanna look at. And from the start, it's set to filmic. Leave it there. Or oh. it's set to filmic. And let's look at few of these settings. Raw is something you may want to use, but for that, you will have to adjust lighting or maybe just here exposure and gamma. Honestly, with raw, you can get way more realistic results than with filmic. But most of the time you will want to use filmic. So let's leave it there and get a little bit lower here on look. And here you can set up how much contrast you will have there. In most of the time I prefer to stay in high contrast. Because it, there we go, it looks something like this. Which I think looks way better for this. You can set it on low contrast or very low contrast, but that's just not what I want. Sequencer leave to sRGB. You can even use square curves, which you set up here and adjust it right here to perfection, which is basically color correction, which you would do in other program, but you can do it right here before rendering. If you render your image, let's go to here, setting rendering, and set this up to render result. You will probably have it there from start. Now that's final render and now you can change it as well. And what's interesting, it will work on your render. That's awesome trick that you can use with Blender. I don't know if any other software has this. And now you can adjust that color change. Oh, let's not go, let's not go too far. And set it right. And then you can render it again. And then you can render the rest of the scene. Alright, let's go a little bit up because that was, this was the most important part. There is also freestyle, which may be interesting if you want to make something comics like or manga like because it will create it will create black lines along most of the edges. But honestly, it doesn't work that well and it absolutely doesn't work if you have some motion blur or something in focus. It just looks terrible. I wouldn't recommend it for this scene. Or you can play it with it on your own. 
you don't need to take care of simplify uh, that's something you will use if you had uh, objects with a lot of subdivisions levels but that's not important right now shadows that may be interesting you will have probably different settings over here you can set up uh, how how high resolution your shadows will be generally higher resolution the better it will look like but i don't think it's good idea for you to go higher than 2k you can set up a high uh, bit depth or soft shadows but you won't see it on this scene these are, these are all settings that you need to play with on your own volumetrics and hair are not, not important right now motion blur as I said in previous video, I wouldn't recommend to work with motion blower in uh, with EV. At least I wasn't able to find a good setting. Maybe you will. If you do, let me know. So screen space reflection. That's something you definitely want to set up. And that's how much the sun and other objects or any light, it doesn't need to be sun, are reflecting on objects that are, that are reflective, which means very high, very low roughness and very high metalness and so on. You can play with this setting. Also, you you won't be able to see in scene like this because there is no not a single rough object. Okay, depth of field leave just as it is, and here is bloom. Bloom may be interesting if you wanna give it a little bit of specific mood or let's say that i want to be to have spider-man fall in love so i will set the color to pink and set threshold very low and as you as you can see it has a bit of a yellow a bit of a pinkish bloom also if you have objects that have emission you uh, you control its setting right here in bloom but right now we won't need it Ambient occlusion is basically how much the objects that are not directly shined on by light are lit. So you can just you can again play with settings a little bit. I prefer to have it a bit higher because I like a higher contrast between dark and light. Samplings is how many samples will be there. How many samples you will need to render it, the higher the number it is, the longer the render time will have. But honestly, in most of the scenes, if you don't have that uh, glass or some bouncy glide, you generally don't need to get it higher than default, which is 64. You can leave it like this. But that's, that's something you will find with experimenting. And I'm pretty sure that that won't be a problem for you. Uh, dimensions and all this you know how to set up already. So only thing we will set up is output. As you can see in my case it's, it's on a CTMP. You can change it if you want. I usually don't do it. And file format is important. For animation, it, uh, some people set up it to AVI or, Rovno or just a movie format, but I wouldn't recommend that. I think that leave it on PNG in default is actually a better idea. I would recommend you to set it, set it to 16. You can leave it on RGB or RGBA. If you want to have a BV, that's black, um, black and uh, white, which means it will be retro black and white, but that's not important right here. So what I set up right here is that in this case, as you have seen here, it will render for every single frame specific image. And I will show you, I will tell you why is it important. That's because with rendering, anything can go wrong. You have rendered for hours and it destroys one frame. If you have it like a video, it's very hard to fix, sometimes impossible. But if you render it to frames, you simply render that one frame again. So that's about everything for render setting. And now let's set up what we will render. I wanna have there oh, this whole dancing moves. 
and it's somewhere from 100 to 120 he's turning so let's set it to 140 so let's set end to 140 now if you play it it will show you exactly what you want to see this is very easy scene so it shows me in very high fps but the harder the scene will be to render the lower fps will be this is a real time preview so now when it is done you can click on render and render animation so i hope you enjoyed this video this series actually because i think that this is a I'm pretty sure this is the last part, but if you think that uh, you still need to explain something about filmmaking in Blender in uh, this kind of series content, write it down to comments. I may make I may make another episode if uh, you will think it's necessary or I don't think. We will discuss it later. Well, that's about it. If you make some made something interesting, not even interesting, if you even think it's pretty shitty f uh, stuff, but you made it, tag me on Instagram, I would love to see it. Maybe it's only you that think that it's shitty. Hmm. That's at least how I hope my art works. Hmm. Let's not talk about it, and have a nice day, see you next time.